client-side profiling and how we can automate it with Selenium. Um, client-side profiling is becoming one of the uh, really big topics uh, when it comes to web applications. Uh, and the main thing is, is that people just get bored if things take long to load. They don't. They just don't want to wait anymore. So, but it's become such a, a big impact that you know venture capitalists are now like looking into it when they want to give money to startups. Um, you know, they'll look at it beforehand, see if it's a good idea, give money, and then they'll continually monitor it. And if things get really, really slow, sorry, <laughs> um, then they just they just will carry on moaning. And the reason why is, um, and there's been a lot of research done by a number of companies, but the, the most notable ones are by Amazon and Yahoo. Amazon found for every 100 milliseconds they added to the latency, uh, they would lose 1% of sales, uh, which probably doesn't seem like a lot when it comes to Amazon. But if you take someone like Yahoo, adding in less than half a second latency made them lose between five and nearly 10% of all their traffic, this suddenly becomes a really big issue. Um, so what are the causes? Um, well, if we exclude server-side issues, like it's just doing a lot of business logic, um, what are the main causes? Well, uh, first of all, lots and lots of HTML. In the good old days where layout was uh, done by tables and things like that, um, we, we saw a lot of just unnecessary markup in the page. And then uh, we had um, people just putting in images and more images and more images. And suddenly, you know, we've got to do a lot of the downloading for each of these things. Uh, and then finally we got uh, we, we came across this thing called Ajax and people decided that they wanted to implement it and they wanted a desktop like environment in a browser uh, so they they started putting in lots and lots of a uh, JavaScript because it just made their lives easier and then obviously CSS uh, so we could do theming and just try and make uh, it, our web pages look good. Uh, and then last of all is really the uh, third party widgets, you know, Google AdWords, things like that. All of these things suddenly, if you put, put these all together, you have uh, pages loading in, you know, tens of seconds just to get a, a page loaded. And um, they're all the major causes. And these are things that we should be trying to avoid where possible. It's not always possible, but if we follow certain rules, we can get things done. So what's the, uh, the usual way of going about fixing things? Well, uh, when we've got images, where possible, sprite them. You know, rather have a one download than 30. Um, when there's um, JavaScript and CSS, see about minifying, obfuscating it. Uh, and then if something is not needed on the page at that exact moment, do we really need to be downloading it straight away? Could we be doing some lazy loading? Um, and then obviously um, try compress things before we send it to the browser and just uh, gzip it. So, but we, we know these all these good rules and things like that, but how do we know what actually needs to be fixed? If we look at a page, you know, our average web page, and go, right, I need to fix all the images. I need to fix all the JavaScript. Um, it gets quite hard. Um, but to truly fix it, we kind of need to understand how the browser is actually doing things. So it, when, when a browser interacts with the page, uh, like a does this HTTP get for the page and starts downloading all of it. Um, it try, the browser tries to be clever and go, right, oh, I need to go download JavaScript now. I need to go download images now, and I need to go download CSS. Um, and it, as it hits each of these items, it'll start going off and downloading each of them, which doesn't seem so bad. 
but then when you start to realize that some of these things will block other things from loading. JavaScript has, got, has had a bit of a bad reputation in terms of security. So now when JavaScript starts downloading, it'll block everything else downloading so that the sandbox can see that it's safe to do so, uh, and so on. So it's, it's always been a bit of a, a tough thing to do, to try fix these issues. Um, but eventually, we all do. We all somehow make things work. We make the pages load faster and that. Um, so then what do people do now afterwards? They'll manually go and run Y slow or page speed. Uh, then they'll go back and tweak things and then they'll manually run Y slow and page speed and so goes the cycle and um, it just gets a bit boring. But being developers uh, and testers and automators, manually running Y slow and page page speed should be the last thing we should be doing. Because there's, there, there are situations where we don't want to be doing that, where we just want to implement this on our CI. Because if you have to run things manually, the chances are you're going to forget to run it. You're going to just forget to do things. So this is not what we want to be doing. But what, what can we do to uh, solve this issue? Well, what if we could capture the network traffic that's hitting the browser? Well, in Selenium 1, that's not so difficult. So you just go capture network traffic. Say you want it in JSON or XML or just some plain formats, and you'll get it back. Fair enough. But what if you wanted to do it with Selenium 2 and remove the need for Selenium RC? Remove the proxy. You just want the browser to tell you what it's downloading, what's thing, and nothing is being injected unnecessarily. Well, that's a, that's a nice way to go. But what if we could just create this, get the network traffic once, and then run Y slow and page speed against it, this one thing. And what if we wanted to do run Y slow one, Y slow two, and page speed, and whatever next will come out? The solution that's com uh, coming to the front nowadays is um, the use of HAR files, HTTP archives of how the traffic. Uh, is, is being created, or what the traffic is. And it's a, it's a new specification. It's, it's a document that says, if there's network traffic, how we should document it and how we should use it. Um, it's in lovely JSON, so it's easy to use in any language and things. And essentially, if we're using Firefox um, to do it, we can just get the net tab from Firebug, and we can just print that out to a file. Uh, and then we can call uh, what we want. So I'm going to do a quick demo. Uh, yes, this is going to be interesting. This looks like .NET. It is on a Mac. <laughs> So uh, hopefully this will start up in the browser and in the right window. So at the bottom we can see it is a shameless plug. It's always going to be a shameless plug. Whose website is that? Oh, there's, there's a guy. <laughs> it does have adverts. Please click. <laughs> Um, but, <laughs> but now we can see that um, we've we fired up a Selenium 2 instance of Firefox uh, and told it to load Firebug and um, we, below we can see the, the network traffic. 
Now, from here, it's it's not that much of a a change because um, one of the people working on the Firebug uh, projects has created a, another plugin for Firebug called Net Exports, uh, and it does all the really nice things of generating a spec version of the HAR file for you. Uh, so you don't actually have to do that much effort. So um, this is the part that doesn't work on a Mac with .NET, so unfortunately I've had to uh, show you. Um, but the network traffic that's at the bottom translates into this, so that we can see everything. We can see how long the page took to load, um, what type of requests were done, if there were any cookies, um, and it gives you all the real good network traffic items that we want. Um, and this, this is uh, the point in my presentation that I kind of wish the voice slow people would um, move a little bit forward in generating a standalone plugin so that we could give it a half hour. Uh, page speed has a hard to page speed converter that you just run. Um, unfortunately, it's Windows based at the moment. But um, it takes all of this uh, and generates a really nice um, page speed report of what's actually happening on the page. So it'll tell, like, uh, I know for a fact that I break a number of rules, like I have three CSS files, which is really, really bad. Should have one. Uh, then obviously I have icons that should probably be sprited. Uh, and then, um, as people have mentioned, I do the nasty thing and put Google AdWords on my blog. Um, so these, these are the things that ideally we need to be working towards to get it fixed. And um, hopefully, as I work with this project, um, it's going to be open sourced so that we can start using it as a general tool to see when pages are really slow um, so that we can actually solve a number of really big problems.